Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing such an amazing story in this book. All You Can Ever Know encapsulates what your life was. You grew up as a child who was adopted. Mm -hmm. uh, you were raised by white parents who loved you to the ends of the earth. But in this book, you talk about something that many people struggle with every day, and that is the relationship of being a child who is adopted, who is living in a transracial household. Why is that so difficult? I think um, it's just difficult, I think, given that a lot of the... First of all, a lot of people go into adoption not necessarily fully prepared uh, to talk about race, uh, which is, of course, crucial in a transracial adoption. Right. You know, like my parents, for example, went in and they asked a lot of questions of a lot of different experts, social workers and judges and adoption attorneys, and they were basically told, don't worry about it. You know, it's going to be okay no matter what. Um, you don't really have to talk about this. It's not going to be relevant. And, of course, it very much was. Right, because you read in the book, and uh, you write about how... You, you had this experience where your, your parents didn't talk to you about race at all. It was just ignored completely. It's mm -hmm. never mentioned. And many people would agree with that. They would say, but yes, why, why should your parents talk to you about race, Nicole? Because they don't see you as a color. They, they're seeing you as Nicole, their daughter. So why, why do you think it would have been necessary or should be necessary for people to speak to their kids about race if they've adopted them? It's completely natural in a way for parents. Of course, it doesn't affect, like, their love for their child. I wasn't... Like, my parents didn't think of me as their Korean child or their adopted child. I was just their child. Um, I think what none of us really knew how to talk about so much, especially when I was young, was the fact that, of course, even if it didn't matter to them, it was going to matter a great deal to me in my life. It was right. going to matter other people would notice, they would comment. Um, and I think also none of us were really prepared for all the questions that we got, you know, moving about in the world, because we kind of stood out in my hometown. Right. Right. So often when I got those questions, I wasn't really sure, like, what to say, because... In my life at home, it wasn't really acknowledged or spoken about. Your book takes us through such a painful, exciting, loving, wonderful journey where you begin to explore who you are and you have that yearning to find out the rest of your story. And, and that in of itself, I mean, you, you describe it in such detail, is, is scary, but at the same time, really exciting. Why do you think it was so important for you to want to find who your biological parents were, where you had these parents who loved you so much? I had thought about it for many years. And really, for me, what was the final push was when I became pregnant with my first child. Um, up until that point, I, I thought, of course, about what it would feel like to have a child and to share my life and my history with them. Um, but I hadn't really thought about how being adopted would affect them, like what questions they might have. And I remember so vividly sitting like at my first prenatal appointment, getting all these questions about my medical history and like what my birth mother's pregnancy and her births were like. And I had no answers. Right. And I suddenly just felt like this deep sense of um, fear and inadequacy that this was information I needed to have, that my children might need to have. So that was really the final push. You went out, you searched, and you found your answers. Um, I don't want to give away a lot of the book, but the, but there is a beautiful connection that you made with a sibling who you discovered. Uh, your your sister, I believe you have two, right? And a half sister and a full sister, as you call them in the book. But but you're very close to to your sister. That is that is a really interesting relationship to have. Somebody who has been a stranger your whole life and let you f you feel like you've known them forever. Yes, yeah, she's an amazing person. And a lot of this book, really, it's her story as well as mine. Um, you kind of get both stories on a parallel, parallel tracks, and then they intersect when we finally meet and find out about each other. Um, and she's just an amazing person. I feel so lucky to have her in my life. Um, my kids have always just known her because, right. like, we connected the same month that I gave birth. Um, but it's been interesting to talk with them about it just in terms of, like, they kind of take it for granted that, like, she's there, that we're together, that we have this family and these relationships we've recovered. Um, but really, we had to do a lot of work, and um, it took a lot of effort and a lot of heartache to put our family back together in this way. So it's not something I'll ever take for granted. It's beautiful. It's a page turner. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. All you can ever know is available now. A beautiful story. Nicole Chung, everybody.